Well, hello everyone, and thanks for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. Here from Arizona in the USA. I'm gonna start saying that because I have started getting so many subscribers from different countries. It is just amazing. Our crafting community and how tight niched and supportive it is it, it just it blows me away but anyway so i wanted to point out the people that left me such lovely comments over the last week or so so if you see your name thank you so so much Some of the comments have been just so heartwarming. It, it, it again, it just is, it amazes me. So this gal, Amy, she wants to see more of my card making binder. So I might film a little bit of that. So anyway, Thank you so, so much for joining me. In today's video, I want to show you how to have pages in your journal where there is a real definite focal point in the center of your signature. So here's one idea. The other idea is using chipboard. And what I did is I cut it in half and glued it to each side of a book page. So this will be the center of a signature. And then the other thing I show you is how to use a stencil with your brother scan and cut so that you can save it to your machine and then every single time you want to cut out this type of a stencil design all you have to do is pull it up on your machine and do that so let's get started this idea came from Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. And what she did is she did it on a corner, but I thought I would do it on the center. So what I'm doing is folding my paper in half. I'm laying the doily that I'm going to use in the center. And then I'm going to just trace around it ever so slightly. Okay, that's traced out. And then I want to make sure that I cut out a place smaller than the image. Then after you do that, you can erase your outer pencil line. Then you take your scissors and cut out that middle part.
And then what she did was laid it over that opening. I'm just gonna, there's a couple of little pencil marks here I'm gonna erase. And then I'm gonna take my Fabri-Tac glue and go around it. That's kind of cockeyed there. I could have gone straight, but I don't think it's gonna matter that much. Then I'm gonna lay my piece right on there. And there's a couple of edges here that kind of stick out. I'm gonna go in there with my glue and adhere them down. So then, when you have your page in your journal, you can see it on both sides. And we can do a little bit of stenciling here. I think I'll do that just to kind of jazz that up a little bit. Now I wanted to show you these stencils. The company is Candence. Uh, they're made in Turkey. I ordered these from Aristocraft, I think. Anyway, they're really nice because they're the size of our American paper. And what I can do is just lay it there on top of it. Hold it in place and then stencil around there. And I think that's gonna add some, some really nice features there. They may have moved on me a little bit, but let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit light in a couple of places, but it's it's okay. I think I might even do it on the other side too. Might be a little bit more difficult to do because this side is raised up, but we'll we'll give it a whirl. There we go. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I like that. I wonder if I can <laughs> lay this in the right spot and kind of go over this one edge that's a little bit light over here. I think I'm gonna try it. Let's see what happens. I think that's correct. Let's try to make this a little bit darker in here. Oh yeah, that's better. Let's see if I can get it. Yep, on that side too. Okay, that's nice, I like that. Is that a nice page for a journal? Very nice. And then to help this side, which looked kind of plain, 
I've taken some seam binding and I was lucky enough to pick up this seam binding for 25 cents at an estate sale. They had a ton of it and I just grabbed almost every pack that they had. So I've just laid that on all four sides. And now that makes that look a little bit better on that side. This side you have this showing, so it's it's it looks fine. But this side, you could see the the paper, and I hadn't torn it uh, or I hadn't cut it straight. So anyway, that's one idea. Now I have this Prima uh, Market chipboard called Time Is Now, and it came. In here like this I separated it but now what I want to do is cut it in half and so I'm just gonna run my scissors here I may lose some of the little pieces as I do this we shall see but I want it to be able to fit on this piece of book page and not, not be able to close good. So we'll see. The other thing I thought I would do is emboss it. So I'm gonna pull out my embossing powders. And I'm going to use this color. It's called uh, Weathered Gold. Grab some paper here. I decided to use my little box instead, my Stampin' Up! box. So what I'm going to do is apply some of the embossing powder to this side. I may have to do it a couple of times. See, I can see already a couple of places where it didn't get it. Like right there. Right there. On those letters. It turns it a little bit dark when it's not covered. Boy, that's a pretty color. Let's see, I need a pair of tweezers. That made a huge difference. That is really, really pretty. So I'll do the other side now. Now all we have to do is adhere these to the pages. I do like that look. And it will help having it cut to be able to open and close that page and yes, it will add a little bit of bulk to our journal, but a lot of the things we add to our journals create bulk. That's why they're so pretty. I love this, this book page.
wonder if I put, no, I think I still need to come in. So here you have the clock. But you're still able to open and close that page and it will sew into the signature. So I like that. That came out good. In hindsight, I do wish I had only glued part of each half so there would have been a tuck spot on each side of the page. Okay, let's try something else. So I have a piece of colored paper. I bought it from Inked Paper Art off of Etsy. And I'm gonna take that st same stencil and I'm gonna lay it over it and tape it down so it doesn't move. And I'm doing it with washi tape. And then I'm going to take just a pencil and mark around that. Where all the areas are. So I've traced all around the image of the stencil with a pencil. And then I'm going to add it to my scan and cut adhesive mat. And we're gonna cut it out and see what happens. I have loaded into the machine the mat and I'm going to go over here to scan, direct cut. We're going to have it scan the image. And then we're going to go to the OK button. We're going to get rid of this stuff here. So I'm going to come up here, bring it all the way down to there. That all looks pretty good. We're going to preview it. I'm going to ignore object size ever so slightly. And I'm going to have to clean some of that up. And by doing that, you just click OK. You go to Edit. And see how down right here where it's red, that is not part of the image. That is not part of the image. We'll just kind of get rid of all of that. That I think is part of the image. So I'm gonna just ignore that. I'm gonna come up here to the top. If I click on it, then it'll get rid of it. Whoops.
I'm gonna go through all of that, then cut it out and I'll show you guys it because I know this jiggling around is probably gonna make you sick. So I've removed it from the scan and cut mat and look at how beautiful that turned out. Now, if you save it to your machine and, and I'm gonna show you that. So after I finished scanning it and cleaning it up, I saved it to the machine. So all I have to do is come in here, press retrieve data, go to the machine itself. There's all the things that I've saved. And there is my image, nice and clean. So all I need to do is add another piece of paper, run it through the machine and cut it, and I'm going to show you where I did that two other times. So that cut stencil image is always going to be in my machine. So here are two other ones that I cut out. Now this was the blackberry paper that I dyed. And then I cut one out of stamping up paper. And so again, that will always be saved in my machine. So anytime I want to cut out this image, I will be able to do that. So that is three ideas for the inside of your signatures. And I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope I was able to teach you something and help you when you are making your journals. Please let me know if there's anything else that you would like to learn from me. And I will be sure and try to teach that to you. Thanks so much, you guys. See you next Monday. Bye.